let me take a look and show you um, how this would actually work. Okay, so this is on the, our fade.html. If I click Fade Me, you'll notice that over three seconds that element will actually fade out. Okay, do that one more time. Okay. All right. Let's move on to the next the second library, the Yahoo User Interfaces. The purpose of Yahoo User Interfaces is to give developers utilities and controls to build rich internet applications. Now Prototype extended the language so it kind of changes some of um, JavaScript's functionality. It allows you to do classical object-oriented programming. Um, Yahoo User Interface, I think it prides itself in not changing JavaScript really, at, at the heart anyway. Um, and the other nice thing about it is that it so if you are a person that doesn't really want to mess with JavaScript, you want to kind of use it more as is, this would be your library. And it also comes in components based on need, kind of like Scriptaculous. Why would you want to use it? Well, it's written by Yahoo and it's served by Yahoo. So if it's written by Yahoo, it has a huge corporate backer, it's going to be around for a long time. It's also served by Yahoo, which means that it's not really relatively very big, only about 30 kilobytes, but, um, and that's compressed. But you don't actually download this to your site. You just run it right from their site. And their site is going to be a lot quicker than most of our sites that we have or servers that we have. Um, it's also got great developer resources, videos, and cheat sheets at its website. So it's easy for you to, to understand what's going on. Some of the best uh, JavaScript developers uh, are actually working at Yahoo. So it, it, it's a great resource for you. And it's also going to include CSS resources too, to try to give you some similarities across fonts with different browsers. Um, how do you use it? Again, there's no download that's necessary, so you just go and find the latest version from their website. Uh, 2.6 will be coming out pretty quickly. It's 2.5 right now. And you just link to it. This first, this first link right here is the dependency. It's the one that sort of sets up the Yahoo global object, and then all the, the rest of the modules you load in separately down below. Um, the way Yahoo user interfaces work is that they create this Yahoo namespace, global namespace. So it, you don't have to worry about any conflict with whatever code that you have. So if we wanted to actually look at fading an element, it's going to take a little bit more time with Yahoo because we're not actually messing with the language as much. Um, and this example deals also with events. We're not going to get into events too much. The main thing to look at is that if we wanted to do, um, to do a fade with Yahoo, we need to include the actual, um, the actual JavaScript library itself. And one nice thing about Yahoo is that if you're going to, they develop these loaders for you. So if you're going to be dealing with document object model and you're going to be dealing with events, um, you can kind of do a packaged loader that will load some of them together. So this one actually has our Yahoo object, the DOM, and our event all loaded into one. And then we need the, an animation um, JavaScript file. So all we do is we have this line right under here, and we're going to change our opacity from whatever it's at to zero, and that's going to make it fade out. So we're going to do this, I'm going to fade, and when we click on that, um, I'm going to fade, it's going to actually fade out for us. So let's uh, take a quick look at that too. Okay, so I'm going to fade. We click on it, it's going to have basically the same effect that we had with Scriptaculous. All right. And if we want to do Ajax, um, with the Yahoo user interfaces, again, you'll notice that we have this, their way of writing their code. The Yahoo global object is out front. And then inside of it, we're going to pass the same kind of things. Uh, we're going to pass a get, a URL, a callback, and then null. Null we're using here because we don't actually, we're not using a post, and we're not expecting, uh, we're not passing any parameters or anything. So we're just using a null there. So that's going to be really simple Ajax for us. 
And then that callback function, it's nice is we have success and failure just like we did inside of prototype, which had on success, it also had on failure. And you can write functions for whatever, whatever happens. Okay, the last library we're going to look at is jQuery. And jQuery also aims at trying to simplify web development. The way it goes about doing is that it is going to seriously shorten your code base. Um, now, Prototype used this little dollar sign, but not exclusively. jQuery exclusively uses that dollar sign as its, its name spacing. So it's, like the, it's a reference or a shortcut to the jQuery object. Everything in jQuery is inside this jQuery object. And so every time you run something with jQuery, it's going to return actually the jQuery ob object. That's important when, when we talk about why you'd want to use it. Um, because you can do things like chaining inside of it, where we can link four or five different effects next to each other. We can do fading, and then we can, or we could change it to green, and then we can do fading. Whatever you want to do, you can chain these things. So this definitely um, is not going to look like typical JavaScript to your programmers. Um, so this, this would be a little bit, I mean, it's, it's really easy to learn, but it's, it still looks different than what JavaScript looks like normally. jQuery prides itself in being fast and lightweight. It is only 97 kilobytes uncompressed. Remember, Prototype and, and uh, um, Scriptaculous weighed in at about 300 kilobytes. And compressed, it's 14 kilobytes. And Yahoo user interfaces weighed in still at about 30 kilobytes compressed. Um, so, so this is going to be dramatically smaller. I mean, 14 versus 30 isn't a huge deal, but you have to load in all those separate modules for Yahoo, so it'll get bigger. Um, but 97 versus 300, it starts to, starts to add up a bit. Still a lot less than the 5 megabytes from Flash that you'd have to download. Uh, anyway, if you want to see again who's using jQuery, there are a lot of people. You can go to their docs, their website. Um, and there are a lot of developers that are using jQuery right now too. It's got a good solid base just like Prototype and, the, and the YUI. How do you actually use jQuery? Uh, you're going to download it and put it on your server again just like Prototype. So you go to jQuery.com and you go grab its newest version, and you include it in, top, in the top in the script. There is only one include this time, though. There aren't any modules or anything broken up, so it's just that one file that you have to include. So if we wanted to do a fade and play with elements, I wanted to do some. Want to talk about that a little bit? But first, again, if we wanted to do a selector on ID, remember with prototype we could use the dollar sign and do that. You can do the same in here. Uh, if we wanted to do a little bit of chaining, what that means is we're going to find we're going to actually find our document first, and then we do the dot, and then we're going to inject HTML into it. Um, instead of doing inner HTML, we're going to use jQueries, and so we can do inserted HTML. We can put right into it, and then we can chain even more. If we wanted to chain a color to make it turn green, and then we want to make it make it fade out, this is really simple. A lot very little code for, for what you actually get out of it. Let me show you how that works too. All right, so if we want to do change, we're going to change this with jQuery. And this one worked a little quicker than the other ones here. But basically, when I click on it, you're going to see inserted HTML, injected HTML. It's going to turn green, and it's going to fade. All right? And it also had an, an emphasis on the inserted HTML. Okay. And if we want to do AJAX and jQuery, it's very simple again. You will be using the jQuery object, the question mark, dot AJAX, and then type as we're just doing a get. And then URL, we're sending in a URL, and then success, we're going to do a callback function on it again. All right. So the main thing about those third-party libraries is they make AJAX very simple, and then they, they have some different strengths and weaknesses or go about dealing with JavaScript differently that as a team you can think about to try to figure out what you'd really would be the best option for you. And there are other third-party libraries. Dojo has been around for a while. Uh, Rico is another visual library that gets added on top of um, Prototype. MooTools and MooFX, uh, MoshiKit, and Sarisa, or Sarissa. Those are other third-party libraries that are available. 